Okay, let's begin. Hello. Hello, Isabella. <laughs> How are you? I'm awake <laughs> in the morning. Okay, so. Um, yeah, so uh, a few years ago, we had an amazing interview about your uh, pussy tutorials and uh, your character, Princess Pussylicious, uh, that you were performing the pussy tutorials as. And uh, we started to talk about your outfit and kind of how you got into comedy and things like that. And uh, we talked about um, a lot of nature and how sexuality, ecology, and uh, nature and gender, all of those things are intertwined. Um, and uh, I thought it was a brilliant interview because I listened back to it and I really enjoy like your creativity and your authenticity and kind of the, the weirdness of the interview because it's, it's kind of, it's out of my league um, kind of information about uh, the vagina and, and the menstrual uh, periods. And even though I share that with you, but uh, somehow I, I'm not um, reflecting on that too much. So that's why you're giving me an, an interesting insight. But uh, at some point you decided to delete that uh, interview from online. And I was wondering what happened? Why uh, did you decide that? Um. Yeah, well, I, I, since leaving Amsterdam and coming back to the UK, I had a big internal process reflecting on my life in Amsterdam, my artistic life, my practice, um, and also my personal life, my sense of who I am, <laughs> who I, who am I? I had a big existential crisis, basically. Okay. And lots of grieving. And uh, through that process, I came to recognize where I had been hiding my shame and that although the pussy tutorials and the way I presented myself and performed had had its own authenticity, like that wasn't a part of me. What I was denying was the the parts of me that were shame, fearful, lacking in love, needing comfort, needing security and safety. Although I did try and talk about those things in the show, my conclusion was that what I was doing was like almost, it is a way of describing it is oversharing. I was oversharing, I was sharing like the minutest details with, Ironically, that's what was funny, was that I was sharing these minute details about my sexual encounters. Um, but it was to complete strangers and, and I didn't have, I didn't have a process myself to after the show, after being very outward, very explosive, presenting for the audience, you know, I'm performing, but I'm performing very personal stories. So there's this kind of masking happening, which is necessary in order to not completely be totally vulnerable and, you know, lose myself entirely. But I didn't have my own process of then going backstage and taking care of the parts of me that may have found that really embarrassing. Like, oh my God, we talked about that time when that guy did, uh, oh my God. And that was actually a really difficult experience. And 
or I still feel a bit uncomfortable about it. So all those parts of me weren't being acknowledged. And so after years and years, well, three years or however long it was of performing this show, I found that I'd sort of built up all <laughs> inside all of these other parts of me and then I, they had to be felt and I felt them and I realised, oh, there's this whole other part of the Pussy Tutorials that is, ha wasn't addressed mm -hmm. because I wasn't addressing it basically myself. So was it uh, because of this confrontation with, with that intimacy that was kind of there, but also lacking the acknowledgement uh, about that uh, intimate part of yourself? Was that, was that the reason why you, you backed off from the interview? Yes, thank you for bringing me back to the question, <laughs> Elena. <laughs> so, so that whole ordeal, ordeal, right, process, shedding, acknowledging, that then led me to recognise how How to put this, I'm not, I basically felt that I wasn't in alignment with anymore, with a lot of the values that I was expressing in the Pussy Tutorials and the way that I was expressing it, um, but like overtly sexualized, um, uh, extremely confident, like performing confidence. I was realizing, oh, I've been so much performing confidence and actually confidence might not even look like that. Confidence might not look like standing in front of a massive crowd and telling them everything about your sex life. Um, so then, so I, so I had this realization and I was like, <gasps> in a kind of shocked moment, oh, can we take it down? Yeah. And I needed this sort of time to rev even more process and conglomerate my thoughts. And so maybe for the people that don't know uh, what you've been doing then, uh, we talked in the in previous interview about uh, the cucumber dildo and the necessity of moon cups, the necessity of songs about that. And, um, we talked about uh, the Kunilingus Lick Me Out song. <laughs> um, so that was the kind of uh, things that are very intimate and confronting and taboo that you were um, talking about in the Pussy Tutorials and singing about in the Pussy Tutorials. Mm. Um, can you maybe reflect on uh, that a little bit, on the content like uh, that I just uh, um, yeah. mentioned? So, well, a lot of the content I'm still for, really, like, I think it's awesome to um, be able to say what you want within a, within a safe relationship. So that, I suppose, for me, like, that's the key thing. It's like, I was focusing a lot on sex. I'm going off your question again. No, uh, uh, we're talking about the content. So the content yeah, okay. was about sex. Yes, that's, okay, that's okay. true. So, so uh, it, what yeah, were you doing? A lot about sex, but I and and uh, but I wasn't really addressing the part before sex. Like, how do you know if it's safe to have sex with this person, or how do you know if energetically? it's safe, like on a more subtle level, right? You might be like incredibly physically attracted to this person, but that doesn't mean that they're not gonna suddenly have some shadow aspect come out while they're inside you and you're gonna have a trauma or, or just like, are you gonna dive into sex with this person? And is that actually cause you're a people pleaser and you, aren't actually you don't actually want to 
you're just so used to people pleasing and pleasing men, maybe particularly. And so you're doing it for the show of it. And I didn't address all of that. I mean, there's so many more other things that I could say. That, that's like a few tiny examples. But so like, so that was a huge, for me, that was like a huge shadow of my show was that I didn't address all the more subtle dealings of men and women. I didn't really talk so much about gay relationships. Um, but it was just, I suppose you could, they were, it was generally at sexual relationships. I didn't address the part where you're deciding who and yeah. how well, valuable it's, that it's, is. It's that not is. And your fault because we are living in a post-feminist uh, era where a uh, feminist is basically being um, uh, embraced to the point that uh, yeah, sexuality for com commercial gain is okay, like, uh, like Madonna and Spice Girls and everyone after that. <laughs> but um, like, it's not okay to uh, unite as uh, under, under the banner of feminism to have like certain commentary issues and to ask for things. So uh, I guess in this kind of milieu, it's, it's normal that you weren't thinking about these very important issues behind uh, what you were talking about but because it's kind of absent from this world that we live in it's perceived that yeah. all our gains are um everything is achieved uh, by feminism for for biological women uh while i think there's a lot that's still the, the that's still problematic and i've um, encountered that while well, i lost my first child and um, then I encountered that uh, it's not uh, self-evident to have children. It can be quite difficult. It can be quite difficult to get pregnant, to actually carry that child to term, to actually give birth to a live child. It's not self-evident. And, um, and it's not talked about. That, that part is not talked about because it's talked about, uh, yeah, pregnancy is you're supposed to be perceive it as uh, being on this pink cloud and uh, everything is great and you, uh, you are uh, motivated to buy, buy and buy uh, things for your baby uh, that you will need. And the, the focus like is on the commerce and, and not on the, um, all the actual things that can happen. And that do happen to a lot of women. And then, um, yeah, it's just, uh, the, 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 I noticed like from talking about this issue with uh, one of my professors that uh, she said, oh, but uh, the, the right of the unborn child, the right to be, is not a feminist issue because feminists are uh, uh, always uh, yeah, working with uh, the right for abortion. So that is a feminist issue, like abortion is a feminist issue, but not the unborn child, which is, really strange. So I think that I'm just raising the necessity for, for why this feminism thing should be redefined. But yeah, we're not so talking about feminism mainly. So I'm sorry that uh, to bring it up. Okay. <laughs> okay. I, 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 but I, I wanted to, uh, to say that. So um, uh, how do you feel about, because, because uh, your work is, is uh, largely about like being a woman and, uh, and this uh, experiencing this body with these body parts. And, um, but uh, pre previously you said that uh, woman is too complex, too complex of a concept uh, and that you're um, feeling something else. And how do you feel about it like a few years later? What it means to be a woman or what it means to be a man or what my experience as a woman is, of course, those things are more complex and to much more subjective. Um, so for me, that's not complicated anymore because I, you know, I realized, <clears throat> I suppose, when did I realize I am a woman and how simple that is? In, it was in my blood, really, in my menstrual blood and contemplating what this means to bleed every month. Like every month I bleed, it's 
that was that was potentially a bed for a child for a baby to grow inside me without me having to think about it <laughs> it just grows and but of course like you say there are all these complications within that but the sort of simplest expression of what it is to be female is in terms of anatomy and biology and physiology is my whole body is designed to bring the children into the world i have breasts that are designed to give food to the child my breasts are also like nerve wise wired through my whole body the nerves the nervous system is um all wired so that there's connections between my vagina my breasts and my brain um which is all to do with pleasure is to do with pleasure but also to do with breastfeeding the baby it helps with the breastfeeding um, I know actually that so, even, even the breastfeeding, uh, it's it's um, the connection goes to that extent that um, your body adjusts to your, your baby's needs. It can sen sense the baby's needs, and then you you give them the the right amount of uh, nutrients automatically. Yeah. So that that, is that's incredible. that's how it works. It's crazy, yeah. Like that is such a miracle. Yeah, and. Yeah to when you know those part those aspects of my physical form sinking in realizing i am run by this cyclical um bodily function i'm run by it my hormones shift every month i need to be in service of my hormonal system <laughs> and my blood, my egg releasing, my female anatomy, my female physiology, I need to be in service of that. Otherwise I end up getting burnt out and, you know, I mean, it's, it's much more um, popular now. It's getting much more popular to track your cycle and stuff. But when I realized that, when I sort of, it sunk in, it dropped, the penny dropped, it really dropped on another level, a deeper level inside me. I was like, I'm a woman. Mm -hmm. That's what it means to be a woman. I'm like, you know, what it means to be a bee is a bumblebee. What it means to be a bumblebee is to serve the hive, is to, you know, they work together as one organism. And that's what it means to be a bee. <laughs> it's like this beautiful miracle that I am and that is when I when I turn to myself my body because of course there's the self the higher self which doesn't have a sex there's just you know my soul or however you know people give different names higher self don't think there is a sex. I don't have a sex, not male or female. But this body that I am in, that I live through for this whole time I'm here on Earth, <laughs> is incredible. <laughs> it's like an incredible miracle. And I can't change it. I can't be something else. This is what I am. And when I'm embracing those, what it really, what it is, then I feel that I'm much more comfortable with being this body and it's self self acceptance on a on a biological level has really shifted my spiritual perspective i think yeah so i think we're already talking about your journey since the booty tutorials <laughs> we we touched upon this a little bit um um yeah and uh you're talking about these uh um fem female bodily functions and uh what's meant by nature how it's designed by nature 
and I know you work with children, but I was, uh, since you're talking about the, the childbearing, basically, that we live for that, um, what are your thoughts on that actually now? Because you're, you're also nearing kind of age when uh, procreation uh, is becoming, I guess, more, less self-evident and more, um, um, yeah, because you're getting older, so it's becoming more, uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, more, um, <laughs> difficult, I don't know what I'm trying to say, but uh, yeah, I mean, what are your thoughts on that? Are you still want to have children as part of your life or? Uh, Definitely. Is, is, uh, are, you, uh, are you just focused on the menstrual cycle? Well, the menstrual cycle is the sign that I'm able to still able <laughs> make children, and and I have been reading a little bit about um, women because there's a there's a bit of a cultural myth that once you're well, it, it's based in science. Like once you're thirty five, then you're on the decline, um, but my experience is like I've met a lot of healthy women in their 40s early 40s who have children and they're really healthy yeah sure it's, it's possible I think even it's until a, your 50s so uh, I think as long as you're menstruating yeah uh, and it's just if I'm just, healthy and I'm I think in some ways I, I would be a better mother yeah in because sure. my emotional literacy has blossomed I'm much more ca capable of taking care of myself and I think that those those things are just and communication my communication skills and now I've been working with children a lot more yeah. teaching so how to how to communicate kindly without causing them trauma but also giving firm boundaries. Mm -hmm. I've developed a lot more my value system about parenting or how they're yeah, teaching and things. So those that's all much more developed and I feel confident that I'd be a really great mother. Okay, <laughs> cool. So um, yeah, tell me maybe more about how this working with children influenced you. And uh, because I think it's quite special not everybody uh, is up for that to work with children and I think it, it definitely does something to you because they are also so the uh in Dutch it's called onbevangen they uh, they're like a clean sheet of paper and uh, their perception of the world is completely uh, different than ours like yes, yeah yes. Um, it's like working with them well I I feel have always had a, an affiliation with children and cats and dogs, <laughs> but I say that because children, cats and dogs have a have a connection because children haven't developed well under seven haven't developed their sense of self their ego their ego sense of self. Um, and they have so they have that like open perception and they're, they're really open to new experience and their curiosity and awe and wonder is very much alive and I love that I love interacting with their their freshness their their fresh sense of experience in the world and I feel really honoured to be able to interact with them while they're in that phase and have a positive influence on their sense of self, their sense of curiosity and learning and encouraging them to feel confident mm -hmm. and um, stay curious like I think because that can be something that can get lost in, in uh, within capitalism, especially and schooling system that basically trains children to go into the workforce. Yeah. Curiosity yeah. is dampened, um, and so I, I yeah, I love 
I love working with kids. I love singing. I'm doing a lot of singing and music and dance with children. And it's a joy. It's such a joy. <laughs> does, it, does it help somehow? Does it aid in your kind of healing from uh, the issues that you were dealing in Amsterdam? Um, maybe. I hadn't really thought of that. It could do. It's definitely healing to be amongst babies and toddlers, especially. I think that is such a healing experience, just being around them. I mean, people know that, like, you see a baby and you're like, ah! <laughs> your response is like, maybe. <laughs> I mean, as long as you've got a balanced life as well and your baby is, hasn't become a burden on you, like, I know that can also happen in this society where women aren't supported or we're not living in tribes, we're not living in communities where everyone's taking care of babies. Um, of course, not to, uh, not to avoid that lived experience, but... I think there is an innate joy in in babies that babies can bring, um, and uh, I love it. And it also helps with my broodiness because I have been broody, very broody, and it was kind of distracting to be so broody. I couldn't concentrate. <laughs> <laughs> on other anything else <laughs> all my brain was thinking about was making babies see a man walk past oh maybe maybe he's gonna be the father of my children oh oh he's quite he's almost suitable it could be him you know it's just like <laughs> everyone was a potential husband yeah and father and so I've been there, and I'm so. working you've been there it's actually man's <laughs> crazy what was I saying I was saying about I was talking about your greediness to uh procreate basically that you saw every man as a potential father for your child what were you yeah. to say by that <laughs> your, your yeah. biological clock was ticking yeah maybe it was my biological clock ticking or it could be that I'm that my whole being my psychic and my biological being is much more ready than I have been in my late 20s I know I had a broodiness in my early 20s which I think was way more biological like that's like a strong biological urge I'm young and fit I'm still really young and my body's like, totally, we can totally handle this right now. Let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> um, but now it's more like a whole, it's a different kind of broodiness. Like I feel it differently. It's difficult to totally form into words, but I do feel, experience it differently to then when I was in my early 20s. Mm -hmm. And it's it feels like a fuller, it's fuller, like I'm more wholly, in a holistic sense, ready. And yeah, 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 working with babies, I do baby and toddler music classes, working with them helps. It just soften, because I'm just live, I'm with them and I'm being a kind of mother. I mean, I went yeah. into an African church down the road on Mother's Day last year. No, this year? When's Mother's Day? What year are we in? <laughs> Last year. Last year, yeah. Last year, I just went in because they and they had a Mother's Day service. And I cried because the sermon was about how all women are mothers. Mm -hmm. And that's just what baseline they were believing if, as part of this church is all women are mothers. And so, though, you know, there was a moment when the I think priest stood, said, to, said to all the mothers to stand up and receive a, a gift. And I didn't stand up at first. And all the women were like, stand up, stand up. I was like, but I'm a mother. 
And they're like, you are, you are, you are a mother. Stand no, up. We don't think about it that like, way. Wow, I cried because I feel that the this capitalist culture um actually degrades and undervalues mm -hmm. motherhood so much that uh, not only mothers themselves feel undervalued, but women don't see motherhood as a valuable thing. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, if you can't, you know, being a mother and working, that's cool. That's that's like cool and hip. But if you were just to be a mother, oh, you know, what value yeah. is that? And to be not even have an, like, my own child and be called a mother and to be cheered and celebrated as a mother, even without a child, I was like, <gasps> It, like it was a huge epiphany like cry, I was just, like crying with this like relief and joy and wow I am a mother and then I've realized of course I am that is a mothering that I'm doing in my classes with kids I'm mothering yeah. that's what I'm doing it's an action it's an action it's an activity mother mother as a verb noun verb verb noun I'm so bad at that stuff I don't I don't know I don't but you know, <laughs> you know like how they say like love isn't just a feeling it's an action it's the same with mother mother is an action it's an activity that you do that you enact and and uh and also I felt that being called a mother as a woman was also deepening my psychic connection with my womb and my eggs and realizing oh yeah like I'm releasing eggs every month like a mother like because I'm always have that potential not always forever but I have that potential to mother so that already makes me a mother and that's like so beautiful and also connects for me back to um old old communal communal living like of course there would have been um and it's you know in anthropology it's theorized that that's how humans lived for thousands of years like that we lived communally and then I'm like oh yeah of course I would have just been another mother to my friend's children and yeah and, you know of course like and it's just soften it's, it's actually like softening and I love to, to value motherhood um and women aren't just there for sexual gratification there's so much you know we're valued for our sex and that's what I was trying to address in the pussy tutorials mm -hmm. but to also value deeply value our, our ability to make children is such a necessary process to go on I really think so because because it's it's actually our power that's our true power is that we we hold the next generation mm -hmm. And uh, we create them in our, our bellies. And because and that's where we've been oppressed the most is our ability to procreate the, okay. us, the so, children. Okay. That's, where, that's where our oppression lies. But so I'm hearing that you've been doing some growing up, basically becoming more, <laughs> more uh, your, your ideas change, but it's still... Uh, your work is still about the biology. So how um, how does your biology, this uh, motherhood maybe, uh, I know you're doing something with the menstrual cycle, how these uh, things influence your work now? Where are you going? Um, okay, well, there's a few different avenues. I'm focusing on the connection between biology and ecology. Mm -hmm. Basically, like, we are nature, <laughs> is what I'm trying to say. 
we're not separate from it, <laughs> however much we might have been brainwashed to think so. <laughs> we're not, which, and so that's like how I'm channeling my work into music videos. Um, the most recent, or the, the first one, first of those videos to come out, or films, more like a film, because it's about nine minutes long, mm -hmm. is um, called Womb River, and that's specifically about menstruation and linking menstruation to natural processes, the seasons, and rivers, and in a very sort of beautiful, simple way, not complex like I've gone and studied ecology, geography, just simple ways that we can all observe. And uh, I like that. And it also brings, this film also brings in myth and anthropological study a little bit into it. But I'll talk about it another time and um, in more detail. And the other films that are still in the process are exploring um, these mythic, it's like a modern myth, so modern mythic creatures who are the lost aspects of the human psyche who have been abandoned now that humans are so much engaged in digital realms. I, I imagine that, I, I came up with this myth myself, like I imagine that there are these nature, these aspects of our psyche that are connected into na natural places and natural beings, organic beings like birds or trees, bugs, is owls, rodents, um, and because we're spending so much more time on digital, those aspects aren't being tended to, and so they're getting lost in the psychic world or the spiritual world or the world in between, the mythic world, they're lost and abandoned in this world, and I am... Um, bringing these four of these aspects to life in these atmospheric music films. Um, one of them is a bird. She's bird woman. One that I okay. most so that's most interesting. Uh, you you're yeah. it's not only biology but myth also. And uh, I think the the things you're dealing with they are usually like um, perceived as maybe a bit outdated, a bit hippie-ish um, kind of perception of the world. Um, but um, you work with it like in a very contemporary way, I think. It's, it's, uh, it's not at all seems uh, uh, unrelevant because it is still relevant. But I, I think I admire how you uh, take these old kind of uh, narratives and uh, bring it into now and uh, uh, make it relevant again. Uh, but uh, what do you feel, what do you think yourself about this, uh, that, that you're dealing with things that may be perceived as a bit outdated, like uh, to, uh, belonging to a certain past uh, time where it was, um, when it, when it was hot and happening, like uh, sort of like feminism also, it was hot and happening at a certain time, but it's perceived as something as passe. And I think with this, uh, with, with um, nature, the way you use it, it also kind of, you would think more of hippies, mm -hmm. which also passe, <laughs> but uh, 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 why do you still uh, de dealing with these issues now? Well, um, I, it's a good question because I've thought that as well. I've thought, oh, maybe I'm not, I didn't get that funding because I'm not hip enough mm -mm. <laughs> or whatever. Like, um, 
but you know I, I just see it as this is not more relevant than now this is the most relevant time to be talking about and addressing our dissociation from our bodies and our dissociation from nature and organic life like this is the time to talk about it now when Elon Musk is talking about inserting technology into our brains so that we can integrate more with artificial intelligence I mean when is a more important time to talk about how we aren't technology we are interconnected with the rest of organic life when when to talk about it but now mm -hmm. you know is to, to I think that to think of these topics as outdated is a great way of scapegoating them you know making it like ah that's that's a hippie it's a way of insulting it to push it aside mm -hmm. and ignore what's staring you in the face you know we've got such ecological problems happening on a massive scale and that's because in my opinion because of the extreme dissociation from our own biological ecological reality mm -hmm. we're not separate from it we are we're we're governed by these processes these organic processes and I think what better, yeah, I just said it, what better a time to address these issues in this way as well, I think. So it's urgent, kind of the urgency, the urgency to return to ourselves, I guess, because people have been uh, creating myth and uh, telling stories for centuries and with nature for centuries and this past uh, decade, maybe with the dissociation happened because of um, increasingly computers and machines and all this automatization. And I think we kind of lost in that, uh, lost ourselves indeed. Like when Elon Musk is talking about these chips in the brain, uh, yeah, it's again denying maybe even that um, uh, our, na in our nature that's. Yeah, we're not robots, we're not machines, and maybe it, it shouldn't yeah. be our future. I don't know why we want uh, technology so bad, like why we pushing it to advance. And uh, we have been working on flying to Mars and, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, establishing colonies of planets, and um, but we are really ignoring all the issues that are urgent here now. I think that they too, and then they should be maybe um, putting all the money into solving problems here than sending rockets to space. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I mean, I? <laughs> I totally am with you, and I feel that you're scratching into an important point, which I'd like to make is that mm -hmm. we, you know, our, our perception of the world and our lives can can be a microcosm of the whole earth and the lives of the whole of the human race and other species on the planet and our effect on it and when I acknowledge my biological reality take care of it realize what I need to take care of my biology I become more and more centered and grounded in my body and then um, that shifts my consciousness it shifts the quality of my consciousness and how I'm perceived and who I can be in the world and when and so if more people are to get into their bodies and that will literally shift how we start engaging on a more global scale there's that fact like the monkey thing what's the monkey thing where they uh, an island of monkeys all learned this new thing and then another island far away ended up 
and learn. Oh, yeah, you mean that, that, that when they learn some new skill that they all learn? Yeah, exactly. That to me, that I see this coming into a biological reality, our bodies, mm-hmm. getting comfortable with it, accepting the limitations of our of our bodies. But because is the easiest place to start with accepting the limitations of the earth. It's easy, it's the only it's the only place to start is right here the closest place that we are directly in contact with organic miracle of life mm-hmm. um and i see that as a as a significant shift in consciousness that will if it happens and reaches it's meant to be 11 i think it's, i've heard that it's meant to be 11 percent that once in a community or a or civilization or whatever 11% of shift in consciousness then it then the momentum builds and it can go everywhere else and i really feel like this is of paramount importance at the moment um you i can't you know it's it's difficult to it's difficult to abuse your own body it's difficult for me now that I have now that I process and I am in contact with my own biology it's difficult to Mm -hmm. self-harm like it's harder to self-harm the more I've accepted it's harder I and I've been an overeater you know I've had lots of issues with food I've had issues with drugs and alcohol abusive abusing those things and my healing has been coming back into my body contacting my body accepting what's there whatever emotional energy is flowing through accepting it loving my actual physical form accepting my limitations within the physical form I, I can't do every single thing that my brain that I can imagine in one day I can't do that because I'm limited by my physical reality you know <laughs> but that has oh it actually blossoms like that accepting it's soften I soften and I blossom in a new way I I well, I suppose it's this kind of spiritual shift, people might call it some kind of spiritual awakening or something. But it is, it's coming into the physical reality, actually expands consciousness on another, in a new way. Well, it's not new, it's new for me. It's probably really old. I think the Buddha probably talked about this. Like, when you come into your body and accept it, Everything changes and you it's like so much love is possible and you recognize what I am able to do, what can I do? Mm-hmm. And it, that's that is so empowering. What can I actually do? Instead of you know, thinking that all the power comes it's so much it's, it's, it's a political act to come into your body is a political economic, it's it's all of those things, it's an act of mm-hmm. shifting and and that transforming the future by by accepting the present. <laughs> well, thank you for those beautiful ending. So we've been talking for almost an hour. So um, okay. yeah, let's let's continue another time because we are going to talk about your uh, movies that you'll be making in. Um, more extensive uh, uh, way. <laughs> <laughs> the next time we're going to be talking about that. So uh, yeah, thank you very much for this update of uh, your um, yeah your, what you've been doing and uh, uh, your work as it uh, transforms uh, still and has been transforming and uh, mm-hmm. it's still about nature. I mean, last time it was also about nature and how all these things are intertwined and. I'm, I'm, I really like the way you've grown uh, up and your um, ideas matured and it's, you're on uh, another level now. 
<laughs> so it's really uh, <laughs> it's really cool and interesting. Um, and yeah, we're gonna talk about more about your new work the next time. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. So thank you very much. Right. Thank you. I, I just remembered, thank you so much, Elena. You're so wonderful. I really appreciate this. And I, you just, I just, as you were talking, I remembered what I wanted to say mm -hmm. about, because, um, you know, there's a lot that can, I've heard a lot, quite some talk about being reduced to your body parts as if that's an insult reduced to my reproductive abilities mm -hmm. or something but and that's that's troubling yes. <laughs> me and um i would just like to invite women and men to question that like are you being reduced or as, is that actually the miracle you power yeah. that you are <laughs> whoa the power to create more humans whoa <laughs> um but i understand it as well because it's where we've been women have been oppressed through their ability to make the new workforce basically you know that they they make the next workers to make more money for the big guys um as well so that it's a it's a a, a dichotomy but yeah uh, embracing the miracle of our biological it's not uh, it's not treated as a miracle anymore within the capitalism <laughs> it's just uh yeah you get uh, some money when you have children you get some support um, because they are important for the workforce but it's not treated as a miracle at all when it is a um, miracle so let's close uh, up uh, yeah. on that note and continue nice. next time.